Welcome to episode one of Chris Knudsen doing family history. Um, my kids are always watching YouTube videos where they're watching other kids play video games and I just thought this is ridiculous. But then I thought, well, <clears throat> what if somebody made YouTube videos of somebody doing family history? Would anybody watch? So I'm going to make a few and see, see how it goes. Um, my goal today is to just find cousins. So I'm starting with my great-grandmother, Harriet Jane Lamb, and I'm looking at her uh, fan chart. And I have it set for birth country, but you can switch it to look um, at sources, stories, photos, research helps, or ordinances. But I'm just going to have it look at uh, birth country. So. I focus on the United States because I love the United States and I like the records in the United States and I get lost whenever I go anywhere else. So let's look at Harriet Jane Lamb's uh, family history. She's got some people born in British col colonial America, which is the same as these people here. They just sometimes it's the United States, sometimes it's British colonial. And then some people born in Wales or in the United Kingdom. So I'm going to pick um, just randomly, let's go with, let's go with Daniel Beebe. So I'm going to click on Daniel Beebe and we're going to look at his tree and he was born in 1770, <clears throat> but now we're going to go to, uh, instead of fan chart view, we're going to go to descendancy view. So clicking on descendancy view, this family has been very well documented. Every single child um, has, has, has their marriage and children. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just quickly look for children that didn't have spouses or children. So starting with Daniel Beebe, married to Sarah Brown. First child was Amos Beebe, born in 1793. So I click on Amos. He's married with several children, but only two of them are listed with, with spouses. Because we're still not in the 1850s yet, I am going to still grab one of the children that's married. So now you have um, Dwight Beebe marrying a Cornelia, but no, no other features. So we're still not in the 1850s, so I'm going to go back. Well, I'm going to go down to the next child, Ira Beebe, and click on that. So Ira Beebe married an Ursula Scooter, and they've got lots of kids. <clears throat> so um, Abraham Beebe doesn't show a spouse, possibly because he was only 19 years old when he died. So then you've got Clarissa, Augustus, Emma, Theodore, and Franklin. So let's see if any of them had... Uh, any children without marriages. So Clarissa Beebe married to Thomas Sweetman and they had a child named Ernest Beebe and then it looks like Clarissa married Reverend David Woolsey DeForest. Um, so <coughs> let's go ahead and look at Ernest's information. Ernest made it married Edith H. Palmer both of them lived up and through the 1960s, if we, uh, but no children are listed. So I'm curious. So they were living in um, New York. He was born in New York and died in New York. Let's look at Edith. Edith was born in Massachusetts and died in Connecticut. So that's interesting. But no children are listed. So I'm just going to quickly um, right click on sources here and open the link in a new tab. For Edith H. Palmer. So Edith, <clears throat> uh, if she's if we've got census records and they don't have any kids, then obviously that's why there's no descendants. So you've, she lived to 19 into the 1965, um, and there's a 1900 census, and there's a 1910 census, and that seems like. Let's look at that. She's 25 years old, she's married. But for some reason, 
is not living with her husband. But it says married. And so they don't have any children by the 1910 census. So let's go ahead and look <clears throat> back at the big tree. I'm going to close that tab. We were on Edith. <clears throat> so we're going to close Clarissa Beebe and um, We're going to go ahead and look at Augustus Beebe, born in 1860. <clears throat> so here we have marriage to Mary L. Robinson and two children. So Jesse A. Beebe and Lulu I. Beebe. And so did any of them get married? So let's look, let's see if we can find the 1900 census. If we go to Augustus BB and click on sources and open up the new tab and we'll click on that tab <clears throat> there's the 1900 census they were living in Danbury Fairfield Connecticut and you have Mary you have Augustus BB living with his wife Mary and living with the two daughters who are 17 and 15 at the time and their mother-in-law Mary E. Robinson. So <coughs> that's the 1900 census. Let's see what happened by the 1910 census. Do we, did their daughters get married and move away? So this is 1910. Ira A. Beebe married to Mary Mary L. Beebe son-in-law J. Lindsay Fuller, daughter Jesse I. Fuller, and a granddaughter Virginia R. Fuller. Okay, so let's go back to details and let's go down and look at Jesse A. Beebe. <clears throat> so we have Jesse uh, born in New York um, but no no spouse which doesn't make any sense because if Jessie's in the 1910 census with living with her parents why isn't she um, why isn't her husband listed here so we've got the source 1910 census let's open that up oh and add this real quick there we go so <clears throat> you have uh, Jesse I. Fuller in the 1910 census Danbury Ward Fairfield Connecticut so her married name is Fuller and she's the daughter of Ira A. Beebe and Mary L. Beebe and J. Lindsay Fuller is her husband but why was that not added? So let's go to review attachments. So Jesse was there, but <clears throat> they never added the son-in-law. Interesting. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and add the son-in-law. Create new person. We're going to add the residents and attach. And they had a child, Virginia R. Fuller, born in 1908. Click on that. So this is a new person. There wasn't a duplicate found on Family Search with the data that they have. So we're going to hit Create New Person. and add residence and attach. Now, Mary L. Robinson, she was in the 1900 census. We know that's Mary's mother. So we're gonna change the focus person from Jesse, we're gonna change it to Mary L. Beebe. And that's gonna allow us to attach it to 
the mother-in-law. She's still living with the family there. Good. So <clears throat> now we have um, Jesse and her husband, Lindsay. Let's see if we can find more information about them. So let's go to Jesse and we're going to click her person. And I'm going to close these other two tabs now that we have a, a newer version of Jesse ABB up. Missing standardized birthplace. Okay. And there is a fuller 1930 census, which should show if they have any more additional kids. So let's click on review and attach. So we have Jesse A. Fuller, J. Lindsay Fuller, Virginia R. Fuller, who was the daughter that was already there, and a new one, Stuart B. Fuller. So let's go ahead and attach these records. <clears throat> and clicking and attach Virginia. And let's add Stuart B. Fuller. 1911, he would be 107 years old. We're going to find his death certificate. So I'm going to put that he's deceased and I'm going to say old <clears throat> and create new person. But I'm going to I'm going to go find his death certificate that way he's not listed as dead, but really he's a, somebody who's still alive on the planet right now. So let's go to Stuart B Fuller and <clears throat> We've got lots of, oh, look at that, death certificate, Michigan. And we're going to click review and attach and see if it's got any details that we can verify. Yep, it's got his parents listed. We've got his death in 1950. So he is dead. <clears throat> attach. And we're going to attach it to his parents' records as well, showing further proof that he's their son and then we're going to close that tab. <clears throat> and 1920 census. Let's we're going to stop there. I'm going to go back to this source. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and look more on Virginia L R Fuller. So go to her person page. So Virginia Fuller, we didn't already have, I thought we already attached the 1920 census. Let's look. And I guess not. So we're just attaching all of these records. Good. And we'll close there. Going back to Virginia. Now let's add the 1940 census. Let's see if she's the same person. <clears throat> okay, looks like she's still living with her parents. And she is 32 years old, still living with her parents. But now they're living in Flint, Michigan. Same place where they're living in 1935. Stuart's still living with them as well. Let's go ahead and add the parents as well. <clears throat> Beth Fuller, a daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law. Okay, so is Beth Fuller the wife of Stuart Fuller? Let's look at the image and see. <clears throat> Oops, I made it too big. So you got Lindsay Fuller, Jesse Fuller, Virginia Fuller, Stuart Fuller, Beth Fuller. And the parents are listed as married, married, but Virginia is still listed as single. 
that Stuart and Beth are listed as married. So it looks like Beth is Stuart's wife. So we're going to close this. Beth is Stuart's wife. So we need to change this, the focus person to be the son, Stuart. And that opens up a spot for us to add his wife, Beth. And we're going to add her there. <clears throat> Now, she would be over 100 years old. She may not have a death certificate yet, but let's say she's dead. And we're gonna say she's old, and we're gonna go find her death record. Her husband was died in 1950, so it would be pretty sad if she lived 78 years without her husband. Okay, so let's click on Beth Fuller, go to her person page, and this is her married name. We don't know what her maiden name is, but let's, and there's no record hints, so let's click on Ancestry. So Ancestry is going to open up, <clears throat> and this will show us some records. So we know that we're living in Flint, Michigan in 1940. Um, so she's the daughter-in-law. The thing I like about Ancestry, you've got the same record, but then they have, because of this record, they have the same <clears throat> suggested records uh, off to the right. Uh, it's kind of like record hints on Family Search, but she's got a lot more than than she did. She got she has more record hints on fa on Ancestry than she did on Family Search. So you've got Beth Marie Everett in a U.S. Social Security Applications and Claims Index. So if I click on that, it says that if this is her, she was born in 1915 in Ohio and her parents, and it's got her signature, and she died in 1996. So. There's nothing specifically linking her with this record. So let's go ahead and look at another one. Beth Marie Fuller, Indiana Marriages, Ingalls. Okay, Beth Marie Ingalls, also known as Beth Marie Everett, Beth Marie Ingalls, Beth M. Ingalls. So if we go to Indiana Marriages, Beth Marie Fuller, marriage registration, Fenton, Michigan, father is John, mother is Anne, spouse, this new spouse that she's marrying in 1950, so if her husband died in 1950 and she remarried in 1950, John uh, R. Ingalls, so then her name was Ingalls. <coughs> Here's a marriage record where her name is Everett. Let's click on that. Stuart B.B. Fuller. So this is the marriage record of her marrying Stuart B.B. Fuller. If we go back to Beth Fuller's tab, and Stuart B. Fuller. Interesting. So Stuart B.B. Fuller is that marriage record. So let's add this record. This proves that Beth Everett married Stuart B.B. Fuller and those are her parents so now we can link all those other records. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on there's a we have a, a shortcut that we've added. Uh, I love using Chrome because they've got all these shortcuts that you can add. Record Seek is a program where you you push the button and it says, oh, would you like to create this page, this web page as a link, as a source on FamilySearch? And I say, yes, I would. 
So now it's going to authenticate. It's got that going on. It just needs a person ID number. So we're going to go back to Beth Fuller. We're going to click on her person ID number. We're going to copy the ID. We're going to go back to this page. We're going to click. Let's see here if we shrink it down. We're going to add that ID number by right clicking and pasting and click next. <clears throat> Attach source to Beth Fuller. Reason. Um, let's just say same same husband and names and dates. <clears throat> so we're going to create that attachment. Congratulations, a new source has been created and added to Beth Fuller in Family Search. So we're going to close that. We're going to reopen our Chrome page. And now we know that his middle name is Stuart B.B. Fuller. So <clears throat> let's go back to Beth Fuller. And her maiden name is Everett. Everett. So before we make this official, we're going to change her to Everett. And now that we know that she's Everett, we also know her parents are John and Anna Everett. And they are in the 1930 census. So let's look for her in the 1930 census or 20. <clears throat> that way we don't have to type in her parents' names. Beth Everett. 1930, let's see if there's a 1930 census here. John and Anna. John, and here's John Everett and Anna Koplinger. And they're living in Flint, Michigan, which is where we want to be. So let's click on that. Our birth rate, our birth uh, has her at 1917. This has her at 1917 as well. So we're going to go ahead and attach. <clears throat> cool. So these people already exist, but it's then nobody ever t added Beth. So you have John Norman Everett and Anna H. Koplinger. And then all these kids. So we're going to let's open John and Everett. And let's just copy his ID number. And there's no children added to any of these relationships. So if we go back to Beth, she doesn't have a father, so we're going to add the father. Paste. And we're going to add the couple so that we don't have to add the mom as well. And she is the daughter of John and Anna. So now. We've already put her on the tree. Nobody put her on because it was 1917. So that's a little bit, you know, that's why. So now we have a fuller tree. <laughs> okay, that was a little funny. Um, and then let's go back <clears throat> to Stuart. And let's go back to his sister, Virginia. And Later on, we can come back and say Jesse A. Beebe, so Stuart Beebe Fuller. But we're just going to go back to Virginia now. So now that we're back on Virginia, I'm going to close some of these tabs just so we can get them out of the way. Close that one too, Virginia. 
So Virginia, whose parents were Lindsay Fuller and Jesse Beebe. <clears throat> so what more can we learn about Virginia? So there are no record hints here on Family Search. We've already got four sources attached. 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940 censuses. So let's go back now. Let's go to Ancestry and see what they can find. It's possible that this find a grave is her. But no, that's a that looks wrong because David Otis Fuller, her maiden name is Fuller. So let's go ahead and just click on this 1910 census. Because we know Ira A. B. and Mary are her parents, and then it just has these census records. So nobody got any further than this because that's all it's showing. If we click on the 1930 census, so 1940 census. <coughs> She's a stenographer. That's all we know about her. Interesting. Virginia A. Fuller. Okay, so let's go to J Jesse. We're gonna go to Jesse A. B. B. <clears throat> Jesse A. Fuller. Jesse BB. That's the death record for Stewart. Okay, what about Lindsay? Okay, I'm still not liking that. So let's do a uh, regular one. <clears throat> regular search from Ancestry from Jesse. Fish kill New York. Somebody else was born in Fish Kill. Right there. Fish kill on the blank. Eighth of April, 1883. So obviously this birth record is where they got that information. Okay, our 30 minutes are up. So just to recap, we, we took the family tree looking at the um, fan chart view of one of my great grandparents picked an ancestor and started coming down. We picked Daniel Beebe and started coming down the tree looking for missing children or missing spouses. We ended up with Augustus Beebe. Who married Mary L. Robinson. We looked at Jesse A. Beebe. And we found her we found her husband, Lindsay, and a daughter. So within 30 minutes, we found J. Lindsay Fuller and Virginia R. Fuller, and we were able to add two new people onto the family tree and onto my family tree. Okay, we'll see you again next week. Keep doing family history; it's lots of fun.